Hi everybody and welcome back to Sand Injunction. Well, I'm standing here in front of the door and I've got Ashford Station on my right and I've got Sand Injunction to my left and I've got this gap between them. So how did I bridge it? Join me now, let's see what happened. Welcome back everyone and yeah I did do the build and I will say again that I apologize that I couldn't make this uh, part of the last video update in June. It was just way too much footage and indeed the footage on this build had to be severely cut down to make it reasonable once more. So hopefully you understand that one and uh, I'm going to let you see what I did do uh, to get across the doorway behind me and join up Sand Injunction to Ashford Station. One thing I will say further is that one apology needs to be made. Uh, I only could build this the once and unfortunately the time lapse that I did was set for a slightly out of focus and I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't rebuild the whole thing again. So you've got two choices. You can watch it and see what I did or you can skip forward that part and catch up with me a little later. So once again, apologies for that. I didn't know at all until I reviewed the footage later, but by that time it was way, way too late. So enjoy the rest of the video, and I hope you do. And if you get something from it, then maybe at the end you'll uh, put a little like, and uh, maybe even place a comment for me. But again, if you're not a subscriber, please, please consider uh, subscribing to Sandling Junction Station. Station? Sorry. <laughs> the channel. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm trying to build my audience and it's always great to know that people are on board and enjoying the content. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's see what I did and I'll catch everybody on the next one. All the best for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Okay, so here we are and uh, right at the very start of doing this um, section across the doorway. Now the way I've, I've, I have decided to do this is I've looked at it long and hard and I really wanted to um, make it as simply as I can. If I did a lift out section up there it's very very hard to put scenics on. So what I wanted is something here that I could get out of the way but have full scenics on the, on the tabletop. So what I've decided to do, this part comes out of Ashford as you well know and this part is the start of Sanding Junction as you all know. But here I'm going to put in a piece each side there and on this side of three by one. It's going to be temporary. It's not there for long. It's merely to locate um, the top of the board. And then what I'm doing is I'm using exactly the same timbers, which is stud timber on each side for a framework, and then the half inch plywood on top of that. So in theory, if my thinking is right, that building it to that um, piece of board that I that piece of wood that I put in there. It should be identical right the way across, and I can tailor any ins any changes on here to here. I can get those right too. So then I can then build the legs from there down with the wheels on, so I get a perfect height from that point of view. No problems, I hope, and. Uh, and that's it. So it's going to be on trolley wheels. It's going to have probably a little shelf in between. I'm not sure. That won't go in straight away because I still need to get in and out of the door. And in future, it'll be locked off on each side with bolts so that when it's in place and it locks off, it's not going to go anywhere. And when I finish uh, using the layout or painting or whatever I'm doing for the day, I can unlock it. I can wheel it out and put it to one side, open up the gangway, access to the door. It's job done. So I'm hoping it's going to be as simple as that. I'm sure somebody out there will say if I did something else it might be even easier still. I dare say it will. But from my own point of view, that's what I'm going to do. And what I've also decided to do is to start the rails that traverse it 
all the way across and go in a, a few inches on each side so it will sit there it will be finished off it will be working and once I know it's all correct and, and all the levels are correct then I will sever the rails at that point and then uh, they will be isolated but then the electrics will be connected up underneath so wish me luck <laughs> I'm gonna need it so uh, hopefully I'm gonna do a time-lapse of this build if that comes off you'll see um, how it goes and if it goes well and if it doesn't I'll put my hands up to it and let you know and um, yeah all being well at the end of this video you'll have a uh, train that may well run it may not run much further than that because there's no track down there but it certainly may just traverse across the doorway and um, in in uh, I think Graham Falston's uh, immortal words proof of concept I stand by that Graham that's a good term proof of concept so if I can get this right and prove it goes across all's good all right more uh, more later uh, say cheerio for now and I'll catch you all soon bye bye Right, welcome back this is not the end of the video by any stretch but uh, it does at least show you the end of the day's progress I have in place a um, bridge section and I will as I said put my hand up if something went wrong and basically what happened was over I had everything right I had it all set up I had the legs perfectly but when I braced them, when I put them into place and screwed them down, obviously things moved a little bit. So for some reason, when I actually put this back in, we were about 10 mil high there, seven here, three over the back there. So I didn't know quite what to do. I didn't really want to take everything off here and start over. So I had the bright idea of just taking the um, rollers off the bottom and to carefully measure and cut off the, the excess that was needed. So I did that, put it all back together, slid it back into place and lo and behold everything was different one more time. I don't know what went wrong but this was considerably lower this side and a bit higher over the back there. So I didn't know what else to do. So what I did do in the end is I realized that actually the drop from there to there uh, once I had just taken a bit more off of this side at the back the actual drop was even it was the same this side to this side and I also realized that if I the uh, MDF backing board that I use in picture framing which I've also been using as straight edges for laying track around the other parts of the layout 
they actually allowed me to put those in place and then I can cork right across and everything will be level. So from there to there, there are two straight sections of track and uh, the cork will go down. So all I've done is I've glued those down now. They'll be weighted overnight. And there will of course be a section along the back here raised so that any trains coming through cannot veer off, crash off or end up in the door or down on the ground. So that said, I think um, I think with that little bit of upset uh, when I finally put it in, I think we're okay. I think it's going to work. And uh, if it doesn't, I shall be very sorry because there's an awful lot of effort gone in today. But um, catch me later. I hopefully will have painted the top. I filled the holes. I've now glued down the MDF panel. All in all, as though it would have been nice to have had this uh, completely level on each side first time, that would have been fantastic. But like all things, all plans, they don't always go to plan. And on this occasion, um, thankfully for this MDF, which is about two and a half millimeter MDF, it's picture framers backing MDF, and it's unlike anything you normally buy in one of the proprietary shops like. Um, BNQ. It's two and a half millimeters, and um, yeah, it's it's rich, literally come to the rescue. So we can put this in. This will glue down overnight. I can paint this up, cork through, and start laying track from over in the Ashford section all the way through. Okay, welcome back. This is just a little update as at the end of the day and um, what I've, how far I've got. I'm not at the end of my June update yet, so I'm still excused the fact that the trains are not running across. That all said, I got all this finished off and I did say that if I made a mistake I put my hand up and I did. I had it all set up perfectly and then when I braced up the legs something moved but it was all over the place in terms of level. So I kept trying to take off little bits here, little bits there, but I suddenly realized that actually it's the same here and here, it's down the same. So by allowing the cork, by putting a, a bit of a bit of two and a half millimeter picture frame as MDF, it brought it up to the, exactly the level I needed so I could run the cork all the way through. That's what I've done. This was um, the, MDF was put down with um, waterproof PVA and then I did my standard um, copy decks on the cork underlay which is fixed all the way through here and here to this point there. So I've then trialled out all of the um, track and you can see if I just bring this track down you can see gently how we come across and we come out of uh, Ashford Station at the back there and we're coming down. This will be two road bridges coming across here, two uh, areas where there's Western Hangar Road Bridge and also the one at Sanding Junction, which would be about here. Probably be on this space here, so little tunnels or short tunnels through there. But then it comes through that and we've got the two points that run through to the crossover and then you've got the lines that will run here on a curvature which is a very slight curve into sanding station and then you've got the other ones that will go on down here on the other platform towards Hythe and Sangate on the branch line so although none of this is set down yet 
at least I know that it will work. And I have been running coaches over. So you can see that it is quite smooth. It's a tight curve, but it's a, it's a fourth radius curve. So I don't see it being too many problems. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, so it just remains for me now to, uh, well, quite honestly, I've got to, I'm going to be gluing all this track down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually electrify or put droppers on each separate point. Now at the moment there are just one, two, three, four, but of course I'm cutting through here and here and again here and here. So what I will be doing is putting two sets of droppers on this one, one set here, one set here, another set on each of these, and then a set here and here, and finally sets there and there. So there'll be a total of eight dropper sets going with that. It's the simplest idea. Um, I designed the whole thing to only carry two tracks over. The width of the board, I could have made it narrower, but I felt that it's just nice to put some scenery on here and uh, make it pretty and nice. I'm going to be putting a piece of timber on the back here. Uh, it's going to be a piece of half inch uh, ply that will just sit along the back and it will only come up so far. It'll be enough to stop any train coming off derailing and going over the back. And it'll also allow me to put a back scene on the front of it. It will be flush with this back, so in effect it'll be the same as the wall. So I can put a back scene all the way through it should I need to, but just cut it off here and here. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, I'm at the point where I'm just going to take all these weights off of here now. It's all glued down obviously across the table from outside the Ashford station all the way through. I didn't uh, record me putting all this in because you've seen me do it loads of times before so I thought that was rather monotonous. So I'm going to take these off and let's see how that track's gone down. I'm sure and I hope it's gone, oh, it's gone down well. Yes, it's looking good. Still a bit of drying through here but that's only where the glue is a bit thicker. It's solid across here. There's no movement. But I'm not going to disturb anything yet. I will just let this finish off and dry off and cure. I'm not going to move the table. I just wanted to show you. Just pushing a couple of wagons up and down. And sever the umbilical cord as it were through here and here what I'm also going to do because I'm not going to just rely on these two bolts on the front of this to keep this rigid it is at the moment but what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I have some small bolts here and here and they're exactly the same on each one and I'm going to drill through so that I have a whole and a hole and the same on this side and there's just going to be simple push-pull location and I think that uh, with that I don't think this is going to move anywhere at all if it does then this will move with this and vice versa so this is fixed to the wall here this one will be fixed to the wall here okay so here goes nothing I'm going to cut the track and hopefully sever the umbilical cord. Okay, enough of the noise. Let's just see if 
what I've done is done. So I've done, as I said here, I've put these latches on, but I've also put four push-pull sections in here, which will release the mechanism, or the bridge, put it that way, and hopefully, oh, no, something's not right, something I've not done. It would help if I sever both of those, wouldn't it? Silly fool. Okay, I really didn't need that happening. Right, so that's fine, no damage done, except I have unglued this part here, so I'm going to have to just do that again. But other than that, it works. And the idea being that that will turn into that space. Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, you saw me at uh, the end of the last clip almost pulling my hair out because I'd um, I'd cut the tracks through, went to move the table and suddenly realized a little too late that I hadn't cut these this um, upline track, which was really annoying. Uh, thankfully, all I did was pulled the sleepers and track away off just a couple here and a few on the other side. So I relined them up and re-glued them and uh, continue to wire in the track around from the station uh, over to this side. Now I'm just going to pan in, I hope, very, very slowly. If I can manage to do this. There we go, a bit too fast. Bear with me. And I'm just going to show you here. Now, what I've done is I've brought the... Um, the bus wire to here and I've wired in those pieces that need to be right at the back there but then what I've also done is I've brought it can't figure out which way to run my hand but there you go hopefully you can see this but I've given it the slack so that this will then run into here and the next piece is wired up underneath so I can actually pull this away and push it into place here and I don't need to adjust any of the wiring it's all there and there is just a nice piece of slack cable between the two and that will allow me to have um, the freedom of pulling the uh, trolley in and out of position and storing it to one side for ease of access in and out of the room and then I don't need to worry about the points on the other side.
Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any comments, please put them in the section below, especially those thoughts on the new layout of Sanding Junction. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. And at the same time, there are other videos to watch there and there. Take a look. Catch you all next time round. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.